about Silicon Roundabout. We're the largest tech meetup community in Europe with 14,000 members in the class. If you'd like to join, you can always go to our meetup page or you can come to one of our events. So that's, you see. Well, maybe that's for you to decide, but we happen to be quite fun. Um, and we work with these tech startups from all over. We are now in our current DC fund as well and Silicon Roundabout Academy. It's soon to be leveled up. So stick around, come have a chat with us and uh, we will Thank you all of you, and we're excited to have you all here tonight. Uh, without further ado, I'll pass it down to Stan. Thank you very much. Sorry, I think James is actually going to say a quick couple of words. Sponsor of evening. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, I'm James Goodman, a wealth manager at LGT Vestra, the sponsor for this evening. And we're delighted to sponsor the event. And it's great to be able to be back at these in-person events. I'm sure a lot of you would agree with that. Um, and thank you to Connected for putting this all together and getting us all in the room. I won't keep you for long as we're all keen to hear from experienced investors, founders, and to network. But I'd just like to briefly tell you a little bit about LGT and how we work with founders and investors, both pre-exit and post liquidity events. We were set up in 2008 by entrepreneurs with the goal of changing the client experience of wealth management. The risks our founders took themselves to scale the business, especially in 2008, resonates with a lot of entrepreneurs who represent the majority of our clients that we manage personal assets for. Because we are entrepreneurs, we understand the journey that you're all on, and we like to assist early on, whether that's introductions to lawyers or friends of the firm, which is why we're really excited to build a relationship with Connected who have already proven to add value in this space. One more thing, we like to talk to clients about non-financial matters, things like personal and emotional values. We've worked with the School of Life and leading philosophers to put together a series of short stories exploring the relationship between philosophy and business. And I've put around the room that kind of pack of books which, is, uh, which are those stories. So feel free to take them home and read them, kind of collect, uh, connect kind of the philosophy side of business and and deeper thinking than just talking about money. Right? I'll leave it at that for now, but if you'd like to hear more about how we work with founders who are scaling their business or are looking to de risk, I'd be delighted to have a chat after the panel. And uh, enjoy the evening. Can you check? Everyone can hear me, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Uh, again, welcome everybody to Huckle Tree, the home of Connected. Um, I'm just going to give off a quick one-line introduction from each of us and then we'll go into specifically everyone's backgrounds and how they got to the position they're in today and we'll talk a little bit more about the kind of things that an angel investor might look for in an opportunity. So I'll kick off. Uh, Sam Luckett, co-founder and chief strategy officer of Connected. I'm joined by... We've got to share microphones here. I think we should share just a Hi, Phil Green, um, finance guy by qualification, Amazon, Deliveroo, Groupon, um, and now just angel investing and just having fun, really. Hi, everyone, I'm Francesco, co founder and managing partner of City Roundabout Ventures and the City Roundabout Meetup Group. And yeah, right now investing in deep tech and also having fun. <laughs> uh, engineer by background, by the way. Uh, I'm Michael Nissim. Uh, I'm a full-time agent investor. My background uh, was in advertising, planning and buying. Um, and I had a media agency which I exited a few years ago and now I do this full-time angel investing. Um, yeah, having fun as well. <laughs> <laughs> trying, trying to do it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. <laughs> cool. So, thank you very much for that, guys. I think we'll just kick off with, we all know a little bit more about who you are now, but if we can start from, but Michael, like, how did you find yourself in the position that you're in today and tell me a little bit more about your journey and again we'll go to Phil as well about you know your journey as a, as a business person how did you get into angel investing and also why um, well as I said my background is in advertising planning and buying uh, I had a media agency which I um, called MNC which uh, I had some ownership in 
we specialize working with startups. Um, so it's something which, from a long time ago, I've kind of seen how, how startups work and they operate. And some of the big companies uh, we worked with were uh, Confuse.com, Moonpig, Oak Furniture Labs, and Trivago, which obviously are big names now, but when I was working with them, they were very small companies, sometimes four or five people in a room. So you get to learn a lot about businesses, how they operate. Um, and I've always, I've always kind of loved the chaos of that kind of startup environment. Um, so I, I was at the agency for 14 years, and it's, as I'm sure you guys all know, it, it's a long and hectic journey um, at that length of time. And there's only so long you can go before you burn out. So I kind of structured everything that, uh, that I would exit a few years ago. Um, my plan was to do a bit of traveling, but life doesn't give a shit about your plans. <laughs> Because COVID comes across and uh, yeah, so I just figured, um, well, let's just angel invest. Um, I did I did some a few years ago, uh, about four or five years ago, and I just I always think in um, tough times, there's, there's great opportunities out there, um, and the experiences I had when I was growing the agency was in the recession of two thousand in, in two thousand and eight. Um, that's really when our business grew. Uh, we, we were ahead of the game, we could be very smart with budgets and so I've always felt very strongly that in recessionary periods there's real opportunity um, and I just think with all the, the time last year it just felt like a good time to do it and there's so many great companies, great people and, and I just yeah thought let's go for it and that was my journey last year. Michael's looking at me because he won't disclose this but he's an investor and connected as well so he's uh, passing on good vibes which is great. <laughs> so, um, is that okay? Perfect, thank you. Oh, what was the question? Uh, by, by, so, so finance guy by background, but in terms of angel investing was, I think, a happy accident. So I, it, it goes back to 2012, um, and at events, a finance event where a typical event where we have a whole bunch of people trying to sell sell new software. Um, I was working at Amazon at the time, so of course the most interesting person in the room to speak to because I had a big budget, but actually the least interesting because trying to get any of that money to a small company. Um, and so a lot of people wasting a lot of a lot of time, but uh, trying to help them out. So I found what there was one founder that had a four person company at the time. Got chatting to him, and I gave him a bunch of feedback on where he was going, the company, what he was thinking of doing. Um, so two years passed. I was living in Luxembourg at the time. I happened to be in London. I met him and say, "Hey George, like, it'd be great to catch up, see see what's happening." So thank you very much. Actually, we adopted a lot of your feedback. And we're now a 14 person company. So it scaled pretty nicely. I'm getting louder, I like this. Um, <laughs> and so, so he'd scale the company to like a 40 person company, take a lot of feedback on. I walked in the room, saw what he'd done, and went, oh shit. If he's actually built this, well, Amazon needs to buy it. Um, and so I went back through, took it to the court dev team. We looked at it, we went back and forth, spent a bit of time. In the end, we didn't, we didn't have the technology. But I got close to George, like what he was doing, I thought, well, we'll keep on working together. Um, long story short, George said I was more of a sales guy than he was an incredible engineer. Um, I was out with one, as a result of trying to buy the company, met the board, the main investor behind it, he eventually had me to board another company that he was in, um, where we ended up buying George's equity away from him, and that was my first investment. Um, so it started on a, on a boat trip, basically, um, oh, an event. All good stories start there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, sure. Hi everyone, so my journey started as a software engineer, so just to see like, is there any programmer or engineer here in the room? Yeah, always few of us, I know, we're like a minority in the corner, and that's actually how the journey started. So I came to an event uh, years and years ago, and this uh, now friend of mine, Luis, um, had this meetup going, and, and with Paul, uh, my co-founder, we kind of helped out and then took over, and then the meetup grew, and over the years and I've been kept and I kept working as an engineer. Uh, and then I decided to invest out of frustration because you know in 2016 a couple of guys came to pitch right here on the stage but different location. Uh, Jonas and Tom, fast forward their Mondo idea is Monzo. Uh, and then Stuart you know coming to talk about they're trying to find other engineers to join his team when he had this company that then became Zigo. Another unicorn, you know, and we started to be okay. So what are we doing wrong here? Um, and a friend of mine had this crazy idea. It's still going, by the way. 
uh, with uh, a healthy feedback arm to uh, you know the, to control basically weight in in augmented reality. And I thought, wow, like why is nobody funding this type of thing uh, at the early stage? And then the reality is that because most of the VCs and investors out there come from finance or and they don't really want to take the gamble in the early stage. So I started to back these companies and then for an hour like, well, you know, we've got the meetup, we've got the company, uh, why don't we make this more formal? So we launched with our own money a VC this year, made for investment so far, got yesterday our first hard commitment from a listed fund. Uh, and so hopefully we'll be raising an actual institutional round for the fund early next year. And but still we start we continue to invest right now with our own capital and yeah, smaller tickets, it's fun so far. <laughs> cool. And for many people in the room who are pre seed seed companies who have never done a round of fundraising before and they're you know, they're really sat here thinking, um, you know, ultimately what does an angel look for? What I'm gonna get on to the negatives that might turn you off, but let's say a pitch deck is your desk now. What are the things that you're looking for that are like, I need to speak to this person? And I appreciate as well, again, from my experience, investors have very different views, and obviously we can't capture everything this evening, but for the purpose of you know, this conversation, we'd love to find out a little bit more about Michael, what excites you, and then we'll go on to some, some of the turn-offs as well. It, it, it's tough for all of you, but you know, because every angel investor will have their own different sets of motivations. Um, and I think really it, it's about trying the best that you guys can to try and understand what are our motivations. For some, and I'll put myself in this, uh, you know, obviously money is, is one motivation, we're here to do an exit, but that is actually not my main 100% motivation in investing. I've now got um, time to spend, I'm not working day to day. So for me, the investments are about as much keeping my brain active um, and as much keeping, uh, trying to get involved in the companies and where can I add value and, you know, trying to feel uh, in, important in, in that sense, in, in, in a kind of company, in a very different way to when I had my own type of company. So for me, what I'm looking for in, a, in, a, in any type of investment, I'm looking to really get involved, add value. Specifically, I've got a, a background in, in advertising, planning and buying, so it's trying to, trying to look at the companies and think, right, do they have the same type of things that I think the other companies I used to work with in advertising, you know, that made them successful, be it, uh, you know, uh, university, pay for it, blah, blah, blah. But it, 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 it's, so I can kind of think ahead, like two, three years ahead, can they actually be a route where I can get involved? So whilst, you know, I, I get kind of quite bored also when I'm just being you know, told unicorn this, unicorn that, and presented numbers, it's all, Everyone takes those with a pinch of salt. What, what interests me more is having a, a clear and succinct um, and realistic objective, whether that be a, you know, a company value today, one million, that could be 30 million in five years. That interests me more than being told, well, this could be 500 million, a billion, because it, it's, it, it, of course it could happen, but 99% chance it can't happen. So it's about having a clear business plan, how are we going to hit it? Um, and then how I can get involved in that. Um, but most importantly, as every investor will tell you, it's, it's about the dynamic and relationship between the investor and the founder. It, it's all about the, found, the founder and founder team. Do you share the same kind of viewpoints, synergy viewpoints in how you look at life, how you look at business? Um, and that is the most important thing. Um, and it, it comes down to trust and respect and whatever you, what your core value sets are. Um, and to me, it, it, without the founding team, and it, it's cheesy, everyone says it, but it is true. Without, I, I walked away from many investments, I thought this would be great, but I just, my gut wasn't feeling it about the founder or the founding team. Um, so that is the most important thing. Yeah, thanks. I think as well, that I, you know, from our perspective, <clears throat> I know Roy can't hardly be here tonight, but I know that him and I, myself in, in particular, when we think about our execution plans, I say this a lot of people, a lot of people use our platform and, and call me and ask for help is I, I rarely think of things honestly further than almost three months down the line. Having this sort of unicorn sort of like sort of fallacy is like you're almost kidding yourself. There's a lot of work that needs to go into these businesses. And I try and break everything down in sort of three and six months time horizons. Of course there's a macro theme which 
you know, in our case, we want to be in the US in approximately 12 to 18 months. But we break everything down in very, very, very small detail. And for those who don't have investors, find yourself someone you can share those ideas with. Michael is an investor in our company and he's really great to bounce ideas off. And we have a very informal, formal relationship. And I know I can WhatsApp him at 11 o'clock at night and he'll be there for me. Uh, I think, and or you know, or come in for an afternoon and kick some ideas around with us, and that's how I try and think about things in a very logical way. Of you know, what are the what are the major things we need to do in the next three months? You know, right now I'm really thinking till the till the year end, and that's about as far as I've gotten. Um, but I, I, I think there are probably two two distinct views of angels. I think there are those that do it from a financial point of view. Um, and whether that's that they're, they're doing it full time, that's how they're going to generate cash. Or I also see financial angels who are doing it alongside their job. Quite often, they're the ones who have asked you, is this SEIS or EIS? Um, and they're just managing their income tax. Um, and so, so there's a lot of lot of those kinds of people out there. Um, and I was, I was with a, a good buddy of mine the other day, and his whole thesis is I'm, I need to have 100 investments because at 100, something's going to work. Um, and so, and it's, it's very much a portfolio strategy and he knows that he's going to write small tickets, he's not going to follow on, um, but he's an angel investor. And so, but, and what he likes is he likes to know that he can contact the founders if he wants some information about the business, but generally he likes to invest in companies where the founders don't call him. That's definitely one type of, of angel investor which is not the category you're in. Um, and I'm not in that category that I think that um, when I'm looking at a, an investment, the first thing is, do I want to spend any time with these people? And that's the first thing. Actually, do I want to spend time with these people? If the answer to that question is no, then I'm already done. Um, because what's the point? Um, you've got, there's so many places you can get involved, so why, why, why invest money in a place where you wouldn't want to spend time? Um, and that's true, is that would I want to work for this company and with these people? And if the answer to that is no, why would I give them money to go and hire people? because I wouldn't work there, so I wouldn't want anybody else to. So that's my second one. The third one is can I add value? Because if I can't add value, then I'm taking the place for somebody who could. So I'd rather they get somebody else into the business that can actually add value to them. Um, the fourth one is, which is probably, I'd say, even more important is, what will I get out of this? Um, and it's not the financial return, it's will I learn something? Am I going to, am I going to get something because if the company is not successful, at least I can turn around and say, I learned something, I supported people I liked, um, and I gave an opportunity to that company to exist in the world. Um, and because I think that at the point of making the investment, you should be happy if it fails. You should be very happy if it succeeds, but you should also be happy if it fails. Um, so that's, that's my criteria. Nice, thank you. Cool, well, on my side, uh, I've done both, right? Angel investing in and out the fund, uh, even for now, the tickets are pretty much the same. And it does change a lot. So that's something that, you know, if you haven't raised money before, if you've only raised from angels, you need to figure out. Because a fund is effectively a company itself, it has its financial uh, numbers. And so whilst an angel has, for example, a virtually unlimited time horizon, uh, a fund does not. And, and for example, you know, the whole, and also a fund has a portfolio, so within those small companies, like 25, 30, some funds do like the spread and trade, they will think of 100. But within that cohort, there has to be the financial returns. It, it doesn't matter if you got a unicorn in the cohort before, if that fund fails, you know, it's going to be a stigma on you. So because of all of this, a fund investment will always be different from an angel. And because of that, you know, always sort of keep the distinction in mind uh, when you approach them. For a fund, it doesn't make sense that you would sell next year for twice the money, or from one million to two million. You've got to go for a unicorn. Uh, for an investor, an angel, it might not be the case. Uh, and so, you know, from my perspective, it's the same. You know, if I put money because I knew the founders in the company, it's just me, you know. Uh, and if I think as silly go round about ventures, then go in, we look at the technical side, we look at the business side, and we think, how would this particular company fit within our thesis and portfolio? So it's about the company as well as the portfolio. Whereas you know, if an investor, I guess, would just concentrate on the company. 
Uh, and so these are kind of two distinctions to, to keep in mind, I guess. I'm just going to add one, one example, right? So I looked at one investment. Um, re really interesting business, got excited about it. I had some reservations about was the business model going to work. So the guy said, well, speak to our lead investor. Um, so I called the lead investor and said, so why did you choose to invest? And are you not worried about this, not worried about that? And he said, well, no, because as long as if this exists and it saves one life, I'm happy with my investment. Now, he'd written a quarter million pound ticket, which is a big angel ticket, quarter million. And his only metric was, if this saves one life, I'm happy. So there's all different types of, of people's motivations as why they'll be angels. So let's get on to some of the common themes around, we've, we've touched on sort of like moles of a founder, how hard they work, gelling, business model alignment, all that kind of stuff. What are the common thematics around turn offs? So I can give you loads of case studies where I've spoken to some really good founders who are doing some really interesting things. And then you flick through to the last page of the deck and they're, they're pre-product, pre-customer, they're trying to raise 30 million quid at a $9 billion valuation and won't budge. And I was giving a giggle to myself this morning because... You've got um, two weeks to invest. In. <laughs> yeah, I was giggling to myself this morning because my first ever startup was a dating app for the fitness community in 2013. And I had a moment about two o'clock in the morning uh, last night where I thought, I've not looked at that pitch deck in seven or eight years. I'm going to have a look at it now. And, Remember why we got rejected? Well, first of all, the idea was shit, and then, <laughs> and then secondly, we were two very, very junior, inexperienced founders looking for two million quid at a twenty million valuation with no customers or product. So I formed that category as well. Over to you guys. Are there any just like quick, like guys, don't do this, don't do this. How important is valuation? Um, and you know, I feel actually, you know, from your perspective as well, from a technical perspective. Any guidance on, on valuation for this day? you kick off off? Yeah, I have a break. Um, so I get nothing inside. Like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, well, I think my, my former co founder is watching, so Harry, if you're watching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll invest now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I'm, I tend not to spend too much time on valuation, which probably sounds ridiculous, but I think that if you like it, then. Yeah, it's like the, the valuation is, in some ways, the valuation can be really important if you're purely looking at financial play, because like, well, how do you make the return here? Um, but I think that if you really step back, the key question is, can these people build a big business? And if you don't get the answer to that question, then it doesn't matter what the valuation is, it's a waste of time anyway. Mm -hmm. And if you think they can, then the only question is, can they build a really successful business? Um, and if you're talking about, you know, like 5x, 10x, 20x your money, like, it kind of falls into the who cares bracket, right? It's like, at least, it's like unless you're doing a fund, um, it's more actually they're going to be successful. So I think that's, I don't worry too much about valuation. It, the thing about what I do look on valuation is though it gives a sense of the mindset of people. It's that actually where is their mindset and actually that it gives a sense of if they're putting so much valuation on something that's not even built yet and you just say not willing to budge, you get a sense that they're probably not people you want to work with anyway. A new way to work from anywhere, for everyone, for free.